In the last video we looked at the sifting property of the delta function. Here is the statement of the sifting property. Integrating little f of t times delta of t minus d with respect to t will give us the value of f at the point d. So here's the picture. We have a delta function at d. I'm assuming here that d is some positive value. It doesn't have to be of course. So we have an infinitely tall spike at d. Here's the function f of t. And if we perform this integral, we just pick out the value of the function at d. We are integrating from minus infinity to plus infinity, but as we saw in the last video, um, we could just integrate from, say, this point here to this point here. We can integrate over an, an interval that contains the point d, because this integral is zero everywhere, because the except at d, because the delta function is zero everywhere, except at d. To prove this, instead of taking a spike at d, an infinitely tall spike, we will take a rectangular function at d. Um, the area under the rectangular function is 1. So, the rectangular function is centered at d, its width is a, its height must be 1 over a, because a times 1 over a gives us an area of 1. What we do is, we multiply the rectangular function by f of t. Now the rectangular function is 0 for values of t less than this value here. Now this value here is d minus a half a. The width of the rectangular function is a, so since d is centered here in the middle of the inter interval or in the middle of the width of this function, then this distance is a half a and this distance here is a half a. So this point is d minus a half a and this point is d plus a half a. The height of the function is 1 over a, it's a constant, so we're multiplying 1 over a by f of t for values of t between d minus a half a and d plus a half a. For values of t greater than d plus a half a, the rectangular function is 0, so we have 0 times f of t here. And a we have it here as well, 0 times f of t. But in here, um, if we multiply the functions, we get 1 over a times f of t. That's for this interval here. So that's what we have here. Now if we take the limit as a tends towards 0, then our rectangular function will approach a delta function at d. So we need to get this integral. Now since 1 over a is a constant, it doesn't depend on t, we can take this outside the integral, and then we just have to consider the integral of little f of t with respect to t. Let's suppose that this integral is big F of t. Now big F here has nothing to do with big F of s when we're dealing with Laplace transforms. It's got nothing to do with that, I'm just calling it big F here for the integral of little f of t and uh, we have to evaluate the integral over these limits. So we evaluate big F at the upper limit, then we subtract big F at the lower limit, d minus a half a, and we divide by a. Now this thing is actually the definition of the derivative of big F of t, but evaluated at t equals d. This here is probably more familiar looking. The difference between this argument of big F and this argument of big F is a. That's the length of this interval here, it's a. And in this more familiar form for the definition of the derivative, we can see the difference between d plus a and d is a. Anyway, both of these gives us the d derivative of big F of t at t equals d. But we know that the derivative of big F of t is little f of t. So the derivative of big F at d is just little f at d. So that's the proof of the sifting property. Let's just take this example. Now we don't have to integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity here because the delta function appears in the interval from minus 1 to 3. The delta function here occurs at t equals um, 
minus 2. Actually, this means that this first integral here is 0. Because the delta function is 0 for values of t from minus 1 to 3. Here's a rough sketch of sine of t. Delta of t plus 2 is a delta function located at minus 2. So the delta function is 0 um, everywhere other than at t equals minus 2. So we have 0 times sine of t, which is 0. Here is part of the function cos of t. The cos of naught is 1. We have a delta function at t equals naught here. Delta of t can be written as delta of t minus 0. So um, the spike occurs at t equals naught. So the interval over which we are integrating, that is from minus 1 to 3, includes 0. So we can apply this rule up here which tells us that the result will be f of d, where f in this case is cos of t, and d in this case is 0. So we are going to get the cos of 0, which is 1. So this integral picks out the value of the function at t equals naught.